Dr. James Milius is, is the director of the New York State Labor's Health and Safety Fund in, in Albany, New York. He currently serves as chair of the, of the World Trade Center Medical Monitoring and Steering Committee, which oversees the program for World Trade Center responders. Dr. Milius received his medical degree from the University of Illinois. Thank you, uh, Honorable Chairman Miller, other members of the committee, other members of Congress who are here. I greatly appreciate the opportunity to uh, speak to you today. Um, I'm Jim Milius. I'm an occupational health physician. Currently work for the New York State Labor's Health and Safety Fund. It's a labor management fund that focuses on issues for uh, union construction laborers in New York. It's also been mentioned. I've also currently served as chair of the steering committee for the World Trade Center Medical Monitoring and, and Treatment Program. Um, immediately after 9/11, I became involved in in working. To, uh, with our members and with our contractors to try to provide protection. We had uh, over 2,000 members who were involved in the initial response for the initial few weeks down at the World, World Trade Center, some there immediately, many coming in over the next uh, few, few weeks into the site and eventually ended up with close to 4,000 uh, members working at the site. Um, in my testimony, I point out we, we tried to obtain information on, on the degree to which they need to be protected. Uh, it was very difficult. The uh, federal government was not uh, initially sharing information, then, then was not. And we uh, were actively involved in the, the site safety committee that uh, Ms. Clark has already mentioned and actively involved in working to provide our members uh, uh, with protective equipment, eye uh, protective equipment, as well as uh, with appropriate safety training, but it was uh, under very difficult circumstances. Things were, were not well organized, and it, it took a great deal of effort. And I think once that effort uh, was not could not be implemented for several weeks or months in, into the uh, course of the, the initial cleanup, for example, the uh, safety training for members there, that was several months after, this, after the initial event before that became required for people working at the site. Um, as I has been pointed out, I mean OSHA played, uh, you know, I think an important role there, and, and uh, they had a number, large numbers of people there, and, and were working very hard. However, it was always a consultative role. They never, there was no enforcement of, of standards, and therefore, as uh, Dr. Jackson pointed out, um, uh, compliance varied quite a lot, and there was very little coordination of, of what the different people were doing. Now, now, that approach was also what was taken by the city of New York, which apparently was in charge of the, of the site. Um, but they also, in terms of health and safety, played a con what I would describe as a consultative role. In that. And while that approach worked uh, for, in terms of preventing major injuries, and it was an extremely dangerous site, and, and I think it's remarkable how, how low the injury rate was, at the present time, we're now faced with thousands of workers who are now suffering from pulmonary disease, other health problems as a result of their exposures at the site. These uh, problems are widespread and serious, as Dr. Landrigan has pointed out, and they cannot be solely attributed to exposures, you know, the day of the event or the immediate few days after the event. Um, they, people continue to be exposed for, for many months after that. Uh, the compliance with you know, consultative uh, uh, requirements is not always 100 percent. It's not as good as when there's actual enforcement. I would also point out that the, the hazards at the site, the respiratory hazards, were not new. They may be unique and they may be very complicated, but uh, when I worked at OSHA, or excuse me, at NIOSH over 25 years ago, uh, actually with Dr. Landgren, we issued an alert about the respiratory health hazards of alkaline dust. Uh, the very kind of cement dust that was uh, present at the World Trade Center site. So it was not a, should not have been a surprise to anybody that uh, this, there was the possibility of respiratory disease um, from this uh, exposure um, to that. And I think if we, looking back, again, retrospectively, I think we just have to admit that, that we failed to provide the proper protection. It's not, as Dr. Jackson pointed out, it's not only just the use of respirators. It was a comprehensive approach to safety of the site that included enforcement. Um, I don't think that you can protect people in those circumstances without a strong enforcement effort. There's too many groups involved. And so my recommendations for, for moving forward is that we need to make sure that we have the kind of incident safety 
uh, management plan that Dr. Jackson's pointed out, some of the other needs for coordination and, and, and pre-planning. But we also need a very strong OSHA involvement in these incidents that includes the ability to, one, comprehensively assess hazards at the site, to enforce the appropriate standards uh, of protection for people, and that would uh, have a place that no work at that site should go forward without OSHA um, has certi certification that that people are being appropriately protected during that work. Now we have we, we do have to recognize that there's a sort of a rescue phase that immediately occurs after uh, an incident such as the World Trade Center. We need to prepare for that. We need the training and so forth for, for people that have uh, in, uh, proper equipment ahead of time so that they are properly protected. Um, and, and, but that should be part of this, this overall um, safety uh, planning process and, and enforcement of, of appropriate health and safety standards at the site. Uh, in the case of the World Trade Center, there was no reason that work could not have been stopped there after the rescue phase until it could have been organized and we could have had a proper safety program that could be enforced throughout that site. Um, I'll also add that, that you know, given in follow up to Dr. Landgren's testimony, we also need a, a comprehensive medical follow-up program for people involved in these incidents. And we know that, we see that in other instances, and I think we, uh, uh, unfortunately, we would not like, we hope that it would not to need to be as extensive as we have for the World Trade Center, but it, it is something that I think is very appropriate and very badly needed in terms of follow-up. Thank you, I'll be glad to answer any questions.